Well, friends, welcome to our live stream service on this Palm Sunday. It's really, really good to have your company with us today. If you could picture the scene, we're back in our church buildings and I or one of our many ministers would say, why don't you greet one another around you? So without further ado, here's some people I know you'd love to see with my personal thanks for going out of your way, way to make these short video clips accessible to us all. So I'll let you introduce themselves now. Hi, I'm from the cars. cars. Monty's very much enjoying his self-isolation where he gets more treats and cuddles every day. God bless you all. Bye. Bye. Hello everyone from Jenny and Peter. I would like to say a special wavy hello to all the clownfish. I hope you're waving back. And I would like to add, keep smiling. Well, greetings from David and Wendy in the garden at 29 East Street. We're enjoying watching things blossom and grow. Birds that feed us, the lack of traffic, noise. Um, we can hear the beautiful bird song around us. So we do thank the Lord for that. Just three bad things. We're really missing be meeting with you all. And also a large family of ants is trying to take over our kitchen. That's a bit of a challenge. And adding to the general disorientation and lack of routine, yesterday, my watch battery failed. But the song, Jesus Be The Centre, somehow came into my mind. So every time today and in the coming weeks, when I look at my bare wrist I'll, and get frustrated, I'll try to remember, Jesus, be the centre of my life. Thank you, Lord. It's great to be able to say hi to all the church family. I've always appreciated our gatherings on Sundays <clears throat> when we've been able to worship and learn together from God's word. But they will be even more special once we can gather again physically. Um, Stepping Stones WhatsApp has been a great encouragement over the last two weeks. And thank you to all who've been a making it possible for us to gather together electronically on Sundays, as well as hearing Mark's word during the week. It's been such an encouragement. Bye. Hello everybody. Hi everybody. Uh, greetings from us, the Blakely family. Do hope you're all safe and well and enjoying fellowship in this service. Take care, hopefully see you soon. Bye. Bye. Friends, thank you so much for sending those clips in and uh, wait for our notice slot a little bit later on in our online service where we'll be giving news of how you can send some clips in and we can share them amongst each other uh, on Easter Sunday. But today is Palm Sunday and it would be great to be out in the open air with crowds of people. Sometimes I've wondered whether we should reconfigure the whole thing and not celebrate Palm Sunday. But Christians, I'm convinced, need to be ever more firmer and sure in their Christian faith and ground these great historic calendar festivals into their lives. So that's what we're planning to do today. Celebrate Palm Sunday in our hearts and in our homes and those we are gathered with. I've read recently Philip Larkin's very famous poem, and there's a line in there which is quite striking about the church. It's a serious place on serious earth. So I trust there'll be moments of seriousness in your hearts and home, and also moments of joy given by our Lord, and some fun as we enjoy this time together. May I begin with a prayer set for Palm Sunday, which speaks of God's tenderness. It speaks of our need to be patient and to be humble. Join me in prayer. The prayer is on the service sheet. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Well, friends, no Palm Sunday will be complete without the singing of that wonderful uh, hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. So with the uh, powers of the electronic media, we ride on to the Minton household. Steve, how are you and your family? Good, thank you. Welcome to our front room again. Uh, yeah, lovely that. to see all those clips. They were, they were great, those clips at the start. Lovely to see people. Over to you, my friend. Okay. <laughs> Steve, and indeed, Alison, thank you for sharing your front room and your musical gifts with us. It's really, really appreciated. Now, friends, you've got your order of service, and if you find it helpful, do use the words. But if you haven't got them before you, then after the refrain for our confession, which I'll say the words, Lord, forgive us, you reply with the words, Christ, have mercy. A moment's quiet as we collect our thoughts together. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have failed you, as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and help. When we take our ease rather than watch with you, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we bestow a kiss of peace, yet nurse enmity in our hearts, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we strike at those who hurt us, rather than stretch out our hands to bless, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When we deny that we know you for fear of the world and its scorn, Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, May God reassure you of his love, his forgiveness, that you are held deeply and safely within the shadow of his wings and his hands. Amen. Now Steve's going to lead us in a song of praise which speaks of those thoughts that we've just prayed, that God will never let us go. Thanks again, Steve. Testing out free, and even when I'm caught in the middle of the 
storms of this life. My boat said back, I know you are near, and I will sing a wee For my God is with me, and then my God is with me. Who then shall I with? Who then shall I with? Sunday and what better way to celebrate Palm Sunday than by having a go at making one of these. This is a paper palm cross because I don't have any palm leaves lying around. I'm not sure you will either. Uh, but the advantage to these is once you've made them you can decorate them. So this is one I made earlier and have decorated. Uh, I'm not the best at decorating but there we go. Maybe you are better. If you've made one and you want to share a picture of it for us on Facebook or Instagram, then we'd love to see them. Just remember to tag us so that we can then repost it. But something else that we would like you guys to have a go at doing as well is a variation on a popular theme at the moment. So lots of people have been making rainbows and putting them in their windows so that people when they're out walking can go on a rainbow trail and note down all the different places where rainbows are. But seeing as it is nearly Easter, we thought, why not mix it up and use these instead? But just a simple plain egg like that is quite boring. So why don't you have a go at trying to make it look something like this? Now, I'll be honest, I don't think I can make an egg even near that level of loveliness but I'm sure you can. So why don't you have a go at making an egg, putting it in your window, and then telling us when you've done it so that we can come up with a map to give to people to try and find eggs as they go out walking this week. It's a great thing for you as families to do. You could do one giant egg between you, or you could do lots of little eggs. Um, and even if you're living by yourself, you could create an egg as well and encourage others to come and see your egg 
And as people do that, why don't we all pray for them as well? So as well as these two things, we've got the activity sheet that will be coming out as soon as the service is over. This one is to do with Jesus entering Jerusalem as it is Palm Sunday, and that's what we celebrate this day. And there'll be also lots of other things coming out on our Facebook and Instagram accounts as well. So please do keep an eye out for them. But we hope to see you during the coming week and we look forward to seeing your eggs and your paper palm crosses coming up on social media. Andy, thanks very much. And thank you to you and Emily for all you're doing for our children and young people. Uh, hats off to parents who are looking after children at home, having been uh, sent home from school and have got all this kind of online learning to get into. I heard this week of a school assembly with over 250 people on Zoom uh, partaking in an assembly. Uh, but our prayers and thoughts are with you, with your children and in your homes. Uh, Andy and Emily have done a fantastic job to get some uh, activities uh, for you all. And if you are struggling in any way, please do ask for help. We'll see what we can do with a, a phone chat or some words of encouragement or just a sympathetic listening ear. There are so many people in our parish volunteering for this sort of thing. Be happy to match you up. And now I mentioned it earlier at the start of the service, these video clips. So there'll be news on our website and Facebook page of something Victoria is doing for us. You can see her fulsome announcement a little bit later on in the week. But simply put, if you send to her or the staff team a short video clip of yourselves doing some exercise at home, we will put them together in a montage and show that on Easter Sunday. It's a little bit of a, a secret way of saying that spiritually fit is the same as uh, the metaphor for keeping physically fit. And of course, the resurrection of Christ enables us all to do that. Send your clips in and you'll understand if it's just a short clip we show of you uh, with, if we get so many in. Then Wednesday during the week, we're hoping for a short online service, which Wendy will be doing at about 10 o'clock. And then Wendy and I will be holding a meditation from 12 o'clock to one o'clock on Good Friday. We would often meet in the church for a three hour watch and it seemed appropriate to mark that in some way on Good Friday. Of course, we'll all gather again on Easter Sunday for our online service. Now some news that has happened during this week in our parish's life. We have an incredible number of people on our roll and a large number of you are joining our online community. It's really good to have you with us. But we've been burdened and concerned to reach those who don't have this electronic facility in their homes. So some 80 or more letters and envelopes uh, were sent courtesy of uh, the Royal Mail. We're not actually allowed to hand deliver them. So there was a great Herculean, Herculean effort of envelope stuffing and letter producing. And I'd like you to know that they too are sharing in the prayer guide that you've been sent as well electronically. Perhaps that will underline your commitment to be uh, in keeping and solidarity with them. Because I know they've really appreciated these tokens that have arrived this week. If I may say so, if you're connected electronically, there are so many things for you to watch, a whole lot of services to enjoy with. You've got the BBC, you've got countless prayer guides. The error surely is to look at so many that you fail to engage with any of them or to just simply not bother. So can I recommend you choose a discipline, make it regular, make it rhythmical, and perhaps find someone in your household or someone outside to buddy up with and call yourself uh, in a loose degree of accountability that you can grow in this life of prayer. But I hope you've got your prayer guide, which we produced for you. And for your prayers, if I may, I'm going to be writing as your vicar to other community leaders throughout Tunbridge and the surrounding areas to find out if there's some significant way we as a large parish can partner with them in this effort to support key workers or to support the NHS or to respond to this national crisis at this time. We're going to cast our bread upon the waters and see what comes back, but I value your prayer as uh, people receive news from us as a large organisation in Tunbridge wanting to do something together for this national crisis. If you have a particular personal need or concern, of course you'll know of people who can be praying for you, 
But if you particularly wanted to underline it or make sure it was covered explicitly in prayer in a confidential way, then do please let us know and we'll pass that to a dedicated team of people who promise to pray in intercessory ways for that concern of yours. Uh, perhaps send the letter in to email into any one of the staff team. Thank you for listening to all those notices and it's so good you're with us today. Uh, do give attention now to God's word. It is read and I offer a sermon based on the reading from Matthew chapter 21. Today's reading is taken from Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your, do your, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray together. Father, thank you once again for the gift of your holy word. As we remember these timeless occasions of festivities which mark our Christian calendar and thereby should mark our lives. We pray that Palm Sunday once more might live for us by the power of your spirit as we consider the written word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Friends, three visual aids for you today, probably inspired by the fact that today's reading from Matthew 21, and it's recorded elsewhere in the New Testament, where Jesus comes into Jerusalem on a donkey, the very first Palm Sunday is in fact a parabolic visual aid. So there were crowds in Jerusalem. In fact, as you look through the calendar of Jerusalem's uh, demographics, there was no greater gathering than that this great so as Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, it's worth pointing out that if he hadn't have been there, the crowds would have been there. It's as if Jesus is making the most of the opportunity. Sometimes you have people facing tough situations. They might well say, well, I'm going to make this work for me. It might be tough for everyone else around, but I'm going to make this one work for me. Jesus makes this particular festival and makes this crowd not just work for him. He's not that uh, vain glorious, but he's making it work for God. And he's doing it in a hidden parabolic way. So for example, the crowds would have been there. There would have been other people on donkeys, but he finds a donkey and he sits on it and he rides into Jerusalem. We can easily forget the fact that this is a hidden message with a hidden sign. So it's a parabolic gesture. And Jesus, if you remember his wonderful teaching in, teachings in the parables, introduced them with another parable. It's recorded in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, the parable of the sower. And he concludes that parable as he introduces all other parables and says those people that have ears to hear will hear. Those people that have eyes to see will see. In other words, it's not everyone that's going to get the point that Jesus is on a donkey. It's just a donkey. It's a sign of humility. And whilst people can't recognize his kingship, 
even though they're going wild with a party that would have been happening anyway without him. He says, I'm going to make this occasion work for God. And I'm going to show you people what true kingship is. I'm going to show people the true path of blessing. I'm going to ride a donkey, a humble donkey. And so it's after the event that his followers would recognize that this is the path to joy and peace. So there's another passage of scripture that which speaks of Jesus when it's written of him, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. And this is the precursor to his joy, his humble disposition, his humble entry into Jerusalem on a donkey. It almost seems cruel and unkind to suggest we could have a party or we could have a festival when there's so much calamity and crisis and desperation in our community, in our town, in our country and in our world. But sometimes I believe Christians do need to stake a take a stand and make a point in opposition to all that's going on around us. I remember, for example, the apostles, when they were locked in prison, they were still singing songs of joy. I remember the story of Richard Wernbrandt, tortured for Christ in a foreign prison and jail. He literally danced with joy around his cell. Where does this occasion of joy come from? When all else around us is not an occasion for festivity and party, how do you, as it were, party in your own soul. There's a verse in Nehemiah which says, and the context there is of rebuilding, and many people are hoping and praying for a rebuilding of a better world after this crisis passed. But that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the key thing there to note, it's not our joy, it's not our efforts, it's not even our sacrifice. It's the joy that's given by God himself. It's sharing in Jesus's joy. So some way or somehow, why don't you find a rhythmical, parabolic gesture, perhaps in prayer or discipline, to party in your soul with the Lord? Not with sacrifice or with effort, but somehow in moments that perhaps only you can treasure to find that greatest gift of all, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so the party, the festival of the waving of the palm crosses, crosses whilst it's vigorous and jubilant and crowd filled for that first Palm Sunday, in these days sometimes of privation, of being locked at home, the party needs to happen in our own hearts and lives. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And my prayer is that you will find a way to make that happen in your own way. Now, the second symbol is figs. And this is figs for grapes. And this is something I prepared earlier, something from the garden. Opposite the garden of remembrance on the other side of the vicarage wall is a great massive fig tree and it's hacked back every year and it grows rapidly, but it hardly, hardly ever produces any fruit. You can just see a bud there. But let me tell you, I've not seen a single fig in all the years I've been here. Why do I mention that? Well, Jesus starts his journey into Jerusalem from Bethphage, which literally means in the Hebrew, the house of figs. In fact, later commentators went on to describe it, the house of the unripe fig. What a place for Jesus to start. A place where nothing happens. A place where figs, which are meant to be one of the most nutritious foods. In fact, if you look up their dietary benefits, they're substantial. Other cultures use them as signs of good times and fertility and much else beside, figs are really, really good. It's just that in this place where Jesus started, they weren't good. They weren't producing fruit. Something that was really good or meant to be really good just wasn't happening. 
course, there's another place where fig leaves are used, and this is never going to happen uh, in a visual aid uh, in my time. But Adam and Eve covered themselves to hide their shame with leaves, with fig leaves. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, with great humility and trust before his loving Heavenly Father, I'm going to enter this place which in humanity isn't ripe, isn't producing anything good, and I'm going to come with grace, cover shame, enable good things to come by my goodness. So the joy of the Lord is our strength, and we might in vain hope cover our shame with all sorts of efforts and sacrifices and man-made products that, as it were, cover the soul, which is laid bare with failure and fickleness. But Jesus Christ himself comes and robes us in righteousness. He covers us with what we can't cover ourselves with. He brings us joy. He brings us grace. He covers up our fickleness and our failure. How wonderful is that? And now here's my third and final illustration. It's some grapes, grapes for fruitfulness. For as Jesus goes in humility to the cross and the other side of the cross, the power of his resurrection, so when we partake in Christ's joy, we know his covering, we will also know in God's goodness, his fruitfulness. Let me describe one way in which I believe God's fruitfulness can come to all of our lives because Palm Sunday speaks of humility, the, the humility of our Lord Jesus who entered Jerusalem on a donkey. And so it says in the scriptures, humble yourself under God's mighty hand and he will lift you up. So in these days, deliberately humble yourself under God's almighty hand and he will lift you up. Having mentioned our concern for children and families who have been so dislocated with their processes of education during these years, I sent a note around our team of some recent research that has been done even last week, showing how young children and young adults with increasing levels of anxiety are learning to cope. Uh, this research is available, available through the BBC, and it's an interesting piece of research. Right at the top of the list of what they describe helps people facing anxiety during these days is to read a book. Secondly, at the top of the list was to learn something new. Good things to replace worrying things within us. I won't mention things that are at the bottom of the list because that would just be perceived as the vicar on a hobby horse, or maybe I should say on a hobby donkey. But hey, there's some good things there for sure, to beat worry and anxiety, a good book, and to learn something new. I remember a book I read when I was 14. It was the second book I ever read of a Christian theme. The first book was Journey Into Life, and I gave my, my life to Christ then. And then I read Corrie Thames Boom, Boom's book, The Hiding Place, a fascinating story of two sisters who endured the horrors of Nazi concentration camp. She went on to be someone who accompanied Billy Graham on many of his uh, crusades in different parts of the world. Corrie Ten Boom, after all she lived through, said of Palm Sunday, if I can be a donkey on which Jesus Christ rides, then the glory will go to him. So perhaps we need to learn what our equivalent is to be a donkey for the Lord, and then he will bear fruitfulness and the glory goes to him as he saddles on up, saddles up on us, and we bear the load in humility and trust, then fruitfulness in the power of his resurrection will come forth. Our lives will be better, like the nutrition in the figs that they should be. May we find ways to party with the Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength, 
to know his grace with our many failures and to pray for fruitfulness in our homes and in our communities as we seek for Jesus Christ to be given the glory. It was given to him on that first Palm Sunday that should surely be our serious desire during these days. Might I lead you in a prayer before I hand over to Steve and we sing again. Father, we seek your grace that Jesus Christ might receive glory from our lives. Where we need to bear fruit, we pray for daily grace for our homes and families and for particular struggles. We pray for your humility and for your patience. All these prayers, spoken and unspoken, we offer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Steve, good to have your company and thanks for playing again. I'll hand no over way. to you. Thank you. And this is the joy about it. I think I've just spoken on that. The joy of yes. the Lord is our... You, you quoted the song, or rather you and the song both quoted the Bible. <clears throat> Though the tears may fall, my soul will rise, my soul will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my soul will rise, my soul will rise to you. While there's hope in my hands, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. Though the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in the tears. Thank you very much. I could sense the joy and exuberance there. A parabolic uh, feeling indeed. Well done. Let me pray and then we're going to use these prayers of intercession on our sheet. After a period of quiet, I'm going to use the link, let us pray to the Lord. And then if you reply with the words, Lord, have mercy. Father, we pray for your joy to fill our hearts particularly during these sad and trying days. May it not be ours, but may it be yours we share in. And we pray that your spirit would constantly refresh 
and enliven our hearts and our homes. For Jesus' sake. Amen. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life, especially during these days, may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem, which we remember today, a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, or feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up on the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy on the day of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We say together, Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Friends, thank you for joining me in those prayers and I hope you'll find a space and a rhythm, perhaps a daily rhythm and routine to come to the Lord in prayer. Thank you for remembering our nine o'clock pause as a parish when we pray for the Spirit to inspire us together in our life during these days. And now if you feel able, join with me as uh, we sing a song of praise in keeping with the festivities of Palm Sunday. The joy of the Lord is our strength in our hearts and our homes. But let's lift our voice if we feel able. Thanks once again, Steve. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Jesus, when our feet 
faithful friend he knows. In his house he gently bears us, grace gives us from all our foes. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, widely yet his mercy grows. Thrill as summer's flowery flourish, blows the wind and it is gone. But while mortals rise and perish, our God gives him changing on. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise the high eternal one. Angels help us to adore him, we behold him face to face, turn and look down before him, dwell us all in time and space. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise with us the God of grace. It's been really good to have your company today. Uh, might we part now with a prayer of God's blessing. And as we do st stay safe and well, perhaps enjoy the sunshine and know God's blessing in your heart and in your home. So may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, send you his joy, remind you daily of his grace, and may you show forth his fruit in your lives, this day and always. Amen.